Paul, good morning. Welcome. Good day. Welcome back to another episode of Alpha Tech Talks. I'm Noel from Alpha Technologies, and with me in studio, our regular Michael van Rensburg. Oh, thank you. Welcome to the show again, Michael. Uh, here we go. Thanks, Noel. <laughs> Good to have you here. <laughs> and you guys know that it's going to be a feature-packed show today because when Michael's here, we just get it all, which is great. So again, thanks for joining us today, guys. Um, today, we are going to be discussing my favorite brand, Bose. And within that, we're going to be discussing the Bose DS range, the FS range, and the Design Max range. Yeah, no, perfect. Yeah, this Sounds is going to be exciting, guys. Lots of stuff to get through today. So, um, yeah, let's hit it off, Mike. So, tell us a bit about the FS range. So, yeah, the FS, uh, FS range or the, the DS range. My uh, apologies, I meant the, the DS, DS range. range. The DS, DS range. range. Yes. Sorry, Mike. Which is uh, Bose's flagship uh, background music and foreground music system. Um, or fa family of products, series of products. It's been around for, I don't know, probably just over 15 years now. Sure, if, that's a while, yeah. hey? That's a long and, time. And uh, very good run with the product so far. Mm -hmm. um, three three main models, a DS16, DS40, DS100. And okay. the 16 and the 40 and the 100, meaning the wattage of the speaker, so 16 watt, 40 watts, 100 watts. And they are available in a surface mount, uh, which is the... Uh, S series or SE series for the ones that were also environmental uh -huh. and the F versions which is the flash mount so you'll get a DS16F for instance which is your flash mount ceiling mount speaker and you'll get a DS16S or a DS16SE which is your environmental surface mount mount speaker nice and they're coming black and white as well guys. correct yes mm. nice okay so so I know you mentioned that the we've had a really good run in these speakers I mean I've seen these speakers since the day I started here and they are absolutely fantastic guys. Yeah. The DS range of both speakers are incredible. So what has made them so good? Why have we ha enjoyed such a good run with these DS speakers, Mike? Yeah, well, I think it's just uh, all the, the research and development that went into the products. Mm -hmm. um, it's been designed really to represent speech and vocal frequencies as, as the primary. Okay. Um, so your vocals are always clear. Your bass uh, rep, uh, reproduction is clear. Your HF reproduction is clear. And uh, yeah, they, they fit into so many different categories. Uh, everything from re uh, leisure, retail, uh, lobbies, office environments, conferencing environments. Uh, take your pick. The, for the foreground and, and, and background music systems, they, they fit it into... Pretty much all the categories. Yeah, pretty you much can think all of, the categories. Yeah. I mean, yeah. like when I request a solution from from solutions, it doesn't matter what it's for, whether it be restaurant BGM or a reception area BGM, you know that sort of thing. It's always DS sixteen. Yeah. And um, you know, I've learned to sort of respect these speakers over the years because they are a proper multi-purpose speaker. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely, mm. definitely. I also find with the DS speakers that um, the the sound quality that comes out of that tiny little driver is exceptional how do they do that yeah well so so they designed the driver to be a specific size especially on something like the ds16 right. which is a yeah. 2.5 inch driver yes, yes which is the right size to reproduce vocal frequencies and mm. that's why you get such a such a good emphasis on on your speech band frequencies because the driver has been sized correctly to be able to reproduce that more accurately and and sort of put those vocal frequencies in the forefront oh it makes perfect sense but now also sort of involved with these DS16s is a bit of EQing or equalization. Because the speaker is so tiny and because you're getting full range mm -hmm. sound out of it, do we need special EQs for these for, speakers? For the DS, yes. Um, so the question was always, do you need the EQ? Well, no, you don't need the EQ. But putting the EQ on the system, putting it on the, on the speaker uh, and processing it a little bit just makes the speaker sound the way that it's intended to sound. So those... Um, mm. speaker EQs are designed to fit the speaker's tonal response so that you get the bow sound that, that you expect to get. Absolutely. Um, and that really just tailors the, mm. the, the response to the driver a little bit better. Nice. Nice, Michael. Thank you so much for that. Can we touch... Um, <coughs> excuse me. Sorry about that, guys. Can we touch on FS a little bit? Yes. So there's two products in the, in the new FS range. So there's two new new product ranges, the FS series mm -hmm. and the DM series, Design Max. Nice. So Free Space and Design Max, right? Okay. And on FS, there's two products. There's an FS2 and an FS4. Mm -hmm. And again, ceiling and surface mount versions available. Um, so you get the FS2C and the FS4C. You also then get the FS2 
S and if it's four S uh, or SE versions. Um, in which that, are the in that surface sense, which is your surface or? surface versions? Oh, okay. Yes, great. All right, so we'll look at a bit of a bit of details on on those in just a moment. Nice. And then the DM range of speakers, Design Max. That's the new. Let's call it the the, the higher end version. So your your free space is a um, entry level into mm -hmm. into that BGA market if you want to want to refer to it like that. And then the DM range is the sort of premium uh, premium version. And there's quite a few there. There's a DM2, DM3, DM5, DM6, and a DM8. Uh, and also two new subs, um, a surface and a, and a ceiling sub in the DM range as well. New subs. Yes. Oh, yes. And uh, again, ceiling and surface mount versions mm -hmm. available. Okay. Uh, so again, your C and your S or SE versions, depending on, on which models. Uh, and then starting with the DM2, that again is a 16 watt uh, unit but with the two inch driver so now on the dm and on the fs range the the number is actually representing the driver size so oh okay. fs2 or dm2 is a two inch four is a four inch five five inch six eight and so on okay so it's not in reference to the output like on the ds range where ds16 is a 16 watt ds40 is a 40 watts etc etc yes okay so how do we get that information then on how what the output is on the dm range so that you'll have to look at the at the spec sheets the for and just sheet. and just look at all the different different wattages mm -hmm. but that gives you your driver size now so now you're sizing the, the the driver and you sort of can understand what level of frequency response you'll get out of out of each of those various different driver sizes okay all right, so is there like sort of a comparison chart we can look at? There, there go is, through there the speakers is, very briefly just to see what the main differences are with these speakers because there's quite a lot of Bose speakers now. I mean, it's not just DS range and FS. I mean, we've got DM and we've got the new FS range mm -hmm. as well. So, so maybe we should go through and, and have a look at yeah, some but, of the... But, but there's a reason for that. Yes. And, uh, and the reason being is that the DS series after this long 15-year-plus run uh, is end of life. Oh, no. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> Bose, why do you do this to us? <laughs> but uh, in saying that, the, the FS range and the DM range is, is an enhancement. It's, it's even better than what it was before. Oh, yes. So better tonal response, better mm -hmm. coverage, better um, SPLs, better frequency response. It's all been improved and all been uh, even, even, even better installation um, Capabilities and ease of oh installation really? actually oh, is what I'm looking so for. So easier to install now as well. Much easier than what DM, uh, DS was, uh, and DS was quite easy. Uh, you know, you had your brackets and then mount your bracket, cable your bracket up, and then plug the speaker onto the bracket. Yeah, it was quite easy. I remember that. Yeah. Yes. Or uh, you know, if it was ceiling mounts, you wire your terminal and you just plug the terminal in, just pop the pop the speaker in and tighten it. Nice. But um, if we then quickly look at that comparison chart, yes, you'll see on screen now. There is uh, a bit of changes there, and I'm just calling it up here on our side as well. So FS2 and FS4 mm -hmm. are essentially the direct replacements and new models against the DS16 and the DS40s. Okay. So an FS2 directly replaces a, a DS16. DS16, okay. Um, whether it be ceiling or surface mounts, you can see on screen there, right at the top of the, the chart. Mm -hmm. And then the FS4 is replacing the DS40, um, again, surface or, or ceiling mount, uh, depending on, on which model. Okay. And then lastly, uh, so that's the, 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 the two versions in the, in the FS range, mm -hmm. um, the FS2 and the FS4. So when you then want to compare DS100, uh, then you compare that against the either the DM5 or the DM6. Okay. And there now you have a couple of different choices, so you can choose which one of the two better suits your, your application. Um, DM6 having slightly higher wattage, higher output yes. uh, than the DM5, but both, again, sitting in, I think the DM5 is about 80 watts, and the DM6 uh, is about 150 watts, if I remember correctly, and mm -hmm. that's sort of where the DM100, being a 100-watt uh, speaker, sort of fits into into that those two fit into that product. Okay, that makes category. perfect sense. Yeah? All right. Okay. Um, and then uh, slightly better frequency responses and things, as I measured, uh, mentioned earlier, on uh, the DM5 and the DM and DM6. DM6 obviously having a lower frequency response because yes. it's a slightly larger driver. Right. Okay, that makes sense. But then also, lastly, um, looking at dependent kits. So remember, there was a uh, sort of a cowling that you could purchase and make the DS16s or 40s or 100s into a pendant loudspeaker. Yes, that's right. So that's right. also now been replaced with the FS2 pendant kit, or the FS2 pendant. Actually, it's a whole speaker now in this pendant kit, and you can see from the chart there uh, towards the bottom. 
It's a very, very good looking um, unit, very sleek, very nice, modern design. Oh, absolutely. We've had some really good success with those FS2 pendants. Hey? Yes, correct. A lot correct. of people have been interested. We, we've sold a couple of them to some very happy clients. Um, so guys, check them out. We'll, we'll put the links in the comments and all that. But I mean, that is a beautiful looking speaker. Yeah. You know, I mean, for a pendant speaker, that shape, that size, I mean, it's perfect. And then lastly, if you see on that on that chart right at the bottom, mm -hmm. um, the FreeSpace 3 sub, which was the companion sub towards the DS series, yes, that's still available. Um, so this, that sub hasn't gone away. It's it's still it's not end of life. It's still available. Okay. And the reason for that is is because the standard FS3 systems. Yes. Uh, you remember the the cubes or the the surface mount yes, and ceiling yes, mount I cubes. Yes. I remember those. Yes. In, in the kits with four cubes towards the sub, those mm -hmm. are all still available, being the surface or the seating mount versions okay. of that. And there's uh, just a, a bit of a chart showing you showing you that. Um, okay. So we can still get the Bose FreeSpace cubes and the subwoofer in both satellite and surface, and they're still available as normal. Correct. Those and the sub is still available as, a, still as a single purchase unit okay. as well. All right. Okay, those are really good. I mean, you can use those in a lot of places. I've seen them installed in, in a few restaurants before. The dispersion is great, and that low end is fantastic yeah, out of that very good. Play. It's yes. very good, yeah. Very, very so, good. So um, maybe just let's just take a quick look at the, uh, the free space and the, uh, the Design Max uh, ceiling and, and surface units just maybe as a, as a quick show to, to show everybody all the different models that are available yes. in that range. Yes. So we'll start off with the, the ceiling and the pendant versions. Awesome. Um, starting off on the left-hand side there, you'll see the FS2C um, with some of its uh, specifications there. Mm -hmm. And that is the uh, ceiling mount unit. Then you get the pendant mount that we spoke about, the FS2P. Mm -hmm. uh, then there's also then the FS4, which, uh, as I mentioned earlier, FS2 replaces DS16 and FS4 replaces uh, DS40. DS40, right? yes. Okay. And these are the, the ceiling versions, so FS2C uh, or FS4C replacing DS16F um, and DS40F. Okay, all right. all right. So when you look at the model number, guys, and it says FS2C, that means it's a ceiling speaker. Correct. FS2S being a surface, surface. speaker. Okay, so Correct. that's an easy way to find out um, what type of speaker it is, guys. Right, and then looking further onto the chart, you'll see then the Design Max version, so free space on the left, Design Max on the right hand side there. Starting off with the Design Max 2. Um, so that's the Design Max 2-inch uh, ceiling, but you also see there's a model designation there that says LP, dash LP, and that stands for low profile. Oh, that's new. That's new. That so hasn't been in a model number of Bose no, before. No, no, that's brand new. That so what they've new. done is they've reduced the back can size. I think it's just slightly under 100 millimeters deep. So for any low balconies or low ceiling um, voids, you can you can fit that that unit quite comfortably. Sure, in. it's about time, hey, because yeah. some of those voids are quite small, right? <laughs> <laughs> so yes. <laughs> then uh, going forward, looking at the DM3, DM5, DM6, and the DM8, mm -hmm. and that's all your your full range versions. And then the last one is the DM8C sub, sub. and that's the new 8-inch subwoofer, ceiling uh, okay. mount subwoofer. So that subwoofer is not replacing anything. That's just a new sub that forms part of the Design Max range. Correct. Okay, Correct. fantastic. Yeah. And like we mentioned, the FS3 sub is still still, still available. available. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Hundred percent. Yeah, the FS3 range, guys, has been incredibly popular. I mean, you can use those little satellite speakers or, or ceiling speakers in pretty much any application. In fact, we've noticed. Um, that a lot of our resellers use these Bose FS range um, in restaurants, mm -hmm. you know, which is nice Correct. because they're small, they're unobtrusive, but you still get that Bose quality sound that you would expect from a Bose speaker. Yeah, 100%. Mm. Then uh, just quickly moving on, looking at the surface mount speakers. Yes. Again, you'll see firstly the FS2 um, SE and the FS4 SE. So those are both surface environmental. Okay. And again, there's some of their specs there you can you can view. And you guys can pause the video and actually study up the uh, the specifications. Yes. And again, these charts are all available actually on Bose's website. On Bose's so website. So pro.bose.com. If you go to Design Max or to Free Space, go to the download section of any of those products, you'll find it uh, under the resources there. Okay. Um, so there's a whole chart with all the different products that you can, okay. that you can compare. Check it against. out, guys. It's actually very useful. And again, when you're looking at the, the model number of the speakers, um, if there is an S in the model number, SE, that stands for surface. SE stands for surface environmental, which means you can put it outside. Yeah, 100%. Awesome.
So looking then at the DM range, you'll see that the DM2 is only an S, as we mentioned. So yes. that's DM2 surface. Okay. Not environmental. Not so environmental. So it has to go inside. Uh, correct. Okay. Yeah. And uh, maybe just talk about the environmental specifications from Bose, and that was the same on, on the, the previous range as well. Yes. Um, they are full IP64, if I remember correctly. I'm double-checking if you quick. I think it's IP64 rated, which is um, dust. Uh, it's water ingress proof and dust resistant, if I remember correctly. What I'm the, glad you brought that up because I was actually going to ask you to tell us about that. Because I know like a lot of speakers do give you an IP rating and I know some of it can be quite confusing. So this is dust resistant and water resistant. Is, is, is that my IP55, sorry. IP55. I'm trying to remember the, uh, the correct specs. So IP55. Okay. So it's dust and water ingress proof. Okay. Um, so what does ingress proof mean? It, it, so it means that it can't penetrate any vital components of the, of the unit. Oh, right. So okay. dust, is, dust is fairly easy to, to seal off, right? So, and, and dust doesn't necessarily affect the speaker yes. negatively, unless it's obviously layers and layers and layers of dust. Mm. Uh, water, on the other hand, is a different story. Yes. So with the, the Bose systems being IP55 rated, uh, it means that they're actually waterproof. So you can actually hose them down. They, they, they can take a direct water jet uh, directly into the, into the driver. So if you literally point a water jet into it, it, it'll take it. So that's actually an easy way to clean the speaker. Like you literally stand yeah. there with a hose, you just hose it down. Yeah, quick, I, I, w I wouldn't do that, but, <laughs> but yes. But yes. Didn't hear that from me. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yes, they, they, they can take uh, vast amounts of water. So which means you can place them outdoors in full um, weather conditions. So you like don't, have the to, don't have to be covered. They can literally be in the rain and... Like right there, right, right there. there. They the can sun, actually get the drenched. Hail, the rain. They can get that. drenched in, in in water and it'll be fine. Nice. Um, nice. There's obviously certain sea conditions and things that that don't really get covered. I mean, sea sea air just it'll rust anything up. Yeah, it's so, so salty that sea air, right? So there's some some conditions where where direct sea spray and things will mm. obviously affect the the speaker's uh, physical appearance negatively. Yes. Um, it's not going to affect the audio. It won't affect right? the performance necessarily, but but the the physical look of the speaker might get affected by oh, like the grill by sea spray, thing. yeah, okay. sea spray and corrosion and things that takes place from yeah, all the salty, salty that's that yeah. air home. Okay, that makes perfect sense. All right, um, and just quickly finishing up, then uh, we're getting a little bit sidetracked you and me today, Noel. Yes, yes, sorry um, about that. So DM two is uh, surface only. Yes, as we mentioned, DM three, DM five, and DM six are all surface environmental. Mm -hmm. And then DM8, again, is uh, surface only. And then also you'll see there's a DM10S sub. And that's the, f the surface mount subwoofer version of the DM8C sub. So they've made one 8-inch and one 10-inch um, on, oh, on those models. Awesome. And again, you guys can pause the video and, and just look at uh, or come back and review the video. Um, it's obviously going directly to our YouTube channel, so you can come back and review uh, those specifications if you if you need to. Yes, please, guys. We'll pop the uh, pro.bose.com web address in the comments when the show is done, mm -hmm. uh, just for a quick reference for you guys. Yeah, we'll, we'll post the links and everything yes. even to, to this PDF document from Bose's site. Ah, fantastic. Free stuff, well. guys. Free. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> we love giving away free stuff, hey? Yeah. It's just text, though, but it's still free. <laughs> <laughs> Good. All right, so... Um, FS3s, we mentioned earlier, they are still, still available. available. Right? Still so good to go, guys. So 100%. it's literally just the DS16 range that is now being end of life, replaced Correct. by FS and DM range speakers. 100%. Okay, that is that is really fantastic, guys. So I think that pretty much uh, wraps the show mm. for today. I think actually maybe there's one more thing that we actually didn't cover. What did uh, we didn't not mention, cover? Didn't mention. Or well, we mentioned but didn't cover it. And that's the ease of installation. Oh. <gasps> On the yes. the DM and the FS range. Yes, yeah, sorry guys. So so yes. Bose has made, and again, you ask the question: so why the replacements after 15 years if it's such a good product and it's run so well? Well, improvements, really. Research improvements, getting better sound, getting better dispersion, and that's also something we can talk about: is the the dispersion guides now on the DM range, um, which allows you, and they've they've made a dispersion. Uh, cover that fits over the the driver if you want to speak so want to say that like so when the seating mount speaker is in or the surface mount speaker is on there's a there's a dispersion guide that fits over the woofer which basically aligns the hf and alif frequencies so if the box says it's 100 degrees conical that's on a wider frequency spectrum so you're not just getting a certain band of frequencies that are that are narrow conical and 
your uh, high frequencies maybe are, are, are wider in this conical dispersion. It's actually the full frequency range that's better dispersed over over the, the conical dispersion. So oh my gosh! So you can actually get away with using less speakers and still get correct, more dispersion. Correct. Correct. Sure. Um, that is so that's cool. that's sort of one enhancement if you talk about the DM range. Okay. And the other enhancements that they've made to most of their products is the ease of installation. Yes. So with DM uh, range, it's a sort of a quick install bracket uh, system for both the the surface and the the seating systems. You can basically cut your hole, place your speaker through the hole, and what happens is the dog ears are designed to to close when when they get pressed through the hole, mm -hmm. and once that it's through the hole, the dog ear will actually pop open, and your your speaker will hang, right? That is pretty cool. See, it's, so it's not like the old screw types. Where you've got it it still is, but the but the first part of it yeah. is sort of designed so that you don't have to stand there with a the screwdriver, hold the speaker up, and try and tighten. So the, it holds itself. It and will basically pop into place. The dog ears open up once it's through the seating hole. And it rests on the seating. And then you can tighten it wow, and, and that fasten it. That'll save people a lot of time, right? 100%. But now you ask the question, how do I now get to the connector? Yes. Well, quite easy. The connector's <laughs> not on the back of the speaker anymore. <laughs> I was just thinking that. So once you have the grill off, you'll see there's a little hole on the side. You'll, your wire will go through the hole. Obviously, before you put the speaker into the, into the seating hole, drop your, your uh, speaker cable through the hole, pop the speaker in, tighten it, and then you can easily... Trim the cable, do what you need to, put it into the uh, into the connector block, and plug the connector block into the front of the speaker. That's very. So easy. the connection is now on the front of the speaker. Um, That's tap very settings, easy. everything again, like like with the the, the DS range, the tap settings are still on the front side of the speaker. So once your grill is off, you can access all the. So you don't have to remove the speaker. You don't have to, to do remove anything the speaker. like before. Like yeah. everything is on the front there. You just wire it up and do your tap settings, 100%. and that's all. That is actually really easy. But now you ask the question, how do I get the speaker out if it needs to be serviced or replaced? Mm -hmm. or I was thinking that. <laughs> so <laughs> if you then, if you then uh, screw the dog ear sort of all the way to the top of its, of its travel, yes. then there's a special guide that will actually close the dog ear again. So you just all three dog ears, draw them all the way up, the dog ears will close and the speaker will come out the My ceiling. My gosh, Bose thinks of everything. Yeah. Hey, that is so easy. Quickly in, quickly yeah, out. Yeah, so that's the, that's, that's, the, cool. that's the surface mount speakers. Ah, the ceiling mount speakers, my apologies. And then the surface mount speakers, um, especially on the DM range, it's also quite, quite an easy install. Uh, in this case now, there's a U-bracket that comes with the unit. And there's some, some other accessories available, um, again, like has like been in the past. But the U-bracket mounts against the, the wall. You can then take the, the speaker and you push the speaker sort of over the U-bracket. So there's slots at the back of the speaker mm -hmm. that fits over the U-bracket. They come through towards the center. Um, of the speaker towards the front. So you take the grill off and you can actually see the bracket come out the front. And from oh there, there's right. two little locks that you can unlock and then angle the speaker. So there's some indications there of the different angles, two, three, four, five degrees, whatever the case is. Uh, that's actually on the front of the speaker. So now once it's installed, again, cable comes through the center of the bracket, terminates it onto the finish connector or the, the plugging connector, and then just plug it in on the back of the speaker once you've, you've popped the speaker into place. Uh, over the bracket. Sure, that's amazing. So this 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 bracket doesn't go on the the left and right side of the speaker. No. It actually goes through through, through the cabinet through the, the cabinet speaker. itself. Correct. That is pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, that's like a game changer, right? Hundred percent. That is pretty cool. And everything's so on the front, just like everything's this. on the front. So you just pop the grill off. You can do your tap settings, wire everything in, and it's all the, the cable. Go. In this case, is on the back for the for the surface mount units. But yes. again, you're going to terminate your your Phoenix connector. Put the speaker on and just plug the connector in on the back. Wow. And then do all your tap settings and everything else from the front. Do your Super angles from the front, quick. the whole lot. Super quick installation. That yeah. is amazing. And that, that U bracket makes it easy. If you, even if you wanted to do a ceiling installation of it, you just turn the bracket around and mount it onto the ceiling. Sure. Both things of everything. So yeah. there you go. So, guys, consider Design Max. It's quick and easy to install. Everything is on the front of the speaker. You don't need to sucker like before trying to get in through the top or the back or whatever like that. It's all done for you on the front. So it makes sense. it really installer friendly. So consider Design Max, guys. Perfect. Mm. That's it about from me today. Yeah, guys, thank you so much. Uh, very interesting discussion today with Michael, as usual. And uh, we will pop all the links in the comment section for you guys to have a look at. We'll also put the link to the comparison charts as well that we showed you today. And um, please, if you need anything, give us a shout. Give your, your uh, account manager a shout as well, guys. Um, we've got speakers to demo with and all that. So if you want to bring clients through, more than welcome.
Guys, as usual, please don't forget to like this video and subscribe so you don't miss out on new content coming out. You can also view a lot of our content on our Alpha Technologies website at www.alpha-tec.ca.za. Simply click on the training tab and there's a whole host of videos that you guys can watch that you guys can watch for nothing, for free, in other words. So again, guys, thanks for joining us today, Mike. Perfect. Thanks Thank all. you for thanks joining for us in the studio again. and uh, we'll see you next time. Cheers. Cheers. Bye. Bye.